morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm really excited to be here with you again, and uh, thank you for um, letting me do this today. And I'm really excited about the talk that I'm going to give you this morning. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about this morning was Unity's five basic beliefs. What amazes me is how long we can be in unity before we realize that unity has five basic beliefs. I think I was in unity like 10 or 15 years and had never heard them. And I went to Unity Village to take some continuing education classes. And there I found out, wow, unity has five basic beliefs. Now, I'm sure my minister talked about these beliefs in her talks all the time, but she never put all five of them into one talk. And what I also know is that people find it difficult to articulate what it is that unity is about when your friends ask you, what is it that unity yeah. believes? People have a hard time articulating that. And so I want you to be able to do that. And a few years ago, I heard of a very um, unique way and simple way of explaining these five basic beliefs. And I thought, wow, if people heard these beliefs expressed in this easy, simple way, certainly they could remember it. So the five unity principles in this easy to explain way are God is, I am, I think it, I pray it, I live it. Isn't that easy and simple to, to, uh, to, to repeat? And I have a handout that I'm going to give to you later so that you can actually have something to carry with you. And uh, now I, I know that there's more to it than those five basic word, you know, statements. Um, but I think that if you can remember those five statements, God is, I am, I think it, I pray it, I live it, that you would be able to remember what they mean. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time this morning talking about what each of those statements means. And so the very first one is God is. And I would imagine that everybody here knows that God is. You wouldn't be in a church on a Sunday morning if you didn't believe that unless your partner or parent or spouse dragged you here. <laughs> But even if that was the case, I would hope that on some level, you have a belief that God is. And so it must be more to it than simply God is. The question is, God is what? Now, one of the important statements that we make in unity, and you have it in your um, bulletin. I have it worded a little bit differently, but there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. That's basically unity's first statement in a nutshell. Um, and and a, lot, a lot of people know that. They are able to articulate it and rattle it off just like that. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Now the presence, the, the statement says there's one presence and one power. That's something that we have in unity. We don't believe in two powers. One presence, one power. There was a Sunday school teacher who was playing with the students, and as she's playing with this child, she says, um, why is there just one God? She asked the student, and, and out of the mouth of babes, the child says, because God fills every place, and there's no room for another one. <laughs> now, that's an innocent statement, and yet it's so true. We have another statement in unity that's a little catchy, and it says, there is no spot where God is not. And that is so true. There is no spot where God is not. Even in the darkest nights in your life, God is there. God cannot not be there because God is everywhere present. There is no spot. God is all there is. And there is nothing more. There is one presence, one power, God the good. So we don't believe in a devil. We don't believe in a separate power from God some being that's like fighting for power in our lives. That doesn't mean that we in unity don't recognize the existence of evil. Evil happens when we don't recognize our divinity, when we don't recognize that we are one with God, when we feel separate from God, then we act out in evil ways. And what we are doing in unity is working to get more in touch with that presence and that power and to develop a relationship with it and learn to let it have a bigger place in our lives. You know, most of us grew up with a different image of God than we do now. I know I did. Growing up, I had this image of God as a man in the sky with a long beard, and he was keeping this book, and he knew everything I did, and he was writing it all down, and I'd better be good. Does that remind you of anything else? <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> he 
you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. He knows if you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So you better be good, for goodness sake. Well, that kind of described God. God knew everything. You couldn't hide from God, and you'd better be good. Well, I have a different image of God now. You know, God isn't that man up in the sky. Although there is still that element of God knows everything. God is omniscient. God is all of the knowledge that exists. <clears throat> and the truth is, God is really mystery. And nobody can really know exactly what God is. We can know what God is in our experience. And there's another story about a little girl at Sunday school, and she's busily drawing this picture. And the teacher comes up and says, what are you drawing? And she says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, well, honey, nobody knows what God looks like. And she says, well, they will when I'm done. <laughs> well, the truth is the only thing anybody will ever know is what God is like for that little girl. For some people, God is energy and very, very impersonal. And for some people, God is incredibly personal. And both of those are valid pictures. We have many, many names in unity that we call God. Um, the Bible tells us God is love. In unity, we also say God is life. God is creator. God is parent. We tend to use father and mother instead of just father. Uh, God is spirit. God is mind. Divine mind is, is a word we have for God. We also call God substance. This was a hard one for me to get a grasp on, but the word sub means under, and stance means stand. So that means God stands under everything that exists. God is divine substance. It doesn't matter what you call God. You can call God Yahweh. You can call God Jehovah. You can call God Allah. I had a friend of mine used to call God Charlie. She said it was short for Charlene. <laughs> doesn't matter what you call God. What matters is that you call it forth in your life. God is. That's the first principle. The second principle is I am. Now, the first principle is what we believe about God. The second principle is what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about humanity. And what we believe is that humanity is not born in original sin. Humanity is innately good. We are not lost. We are not sinful. We are spiritual beings. And we're having a human experience. And as children of God, we have access to all that God is. However, living in this human experience, sometimes we have a tendency to get caught up with the human identification of who we are. And there was a story about a little girl who was the daughter of a famous senator. And everywhere she went, people referred to her as the senator's daughter. And so she went to her mother one day, and she says, Mommy, why does everybody call me the senator's daughter? Don't they know I'm Susie? And so her mother, agreeing with her, says, well, you know, from now on, when someone says you're the senator's daughter, correct them and say, no, I'm Susie. Well, so then she went to a press conference, and all this press is there, and one of the reporters bent down and said, well, aren't you the president's da uh, senator's daughter? She says, well, not according to my mother, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you, and what are you? We are divine beings. And we honor our humanity, but we celebrate our divinity. And Jesus was a man who came to earth to show us how to live our divinity fully. And we call that divinity within us the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ means divinity fully expressed. And Christ was one who came and lived that divinity to the fullest. Another word we use for that divinity within us is I am. It is that I am presence within us. Uh, we are one with God. We are not separate from God. And the analogy that I love to use is that of the wave in the ocean. Because they need each other, don't they? If the ocean didn't have a wave, what would it be? It would be an inert body of water with no expression. So we are the expression of God. And we wouldn't be here at all without the ocean. You can't have a wave without the ocean. And so the ocean gives us life, and we give expression to that presence and power of God. God is, I am. 